What's crack -a guys and girls? Hopefully everyone's doing all right. I know I am. Right, I'm just making this video quick, but I know a lot of people have asked me in relation to the Levo, which I featured in a previous video. Now, this is a Gen 2 Levo. This is a Comp Carbon. This is a 2019 model. Uh, I'm not going to go over the Levo in its entirety because I feel like there's been pure advocates who have done it to death. But I know that there's been a couple of people who have asked me in relation to this bike. Where did it come from? Why do you have it? And what happened to the Deng Fu stuff? The answer to those questions is simple. One, the Deng Fu stuff, it's not going away. I've obviously still got them. I'm not technically an advocate for Deng Fu, but I believe in their ethos as to what they're trying to bring to the table in 2022, being as, you know, things are getting more expensive. And of course, you know, they are starting to offer electric mountain bikes at an affordable price. Well, no, acceptable price, we'll say, and giving people the ability to swing a leg over a bike and still have the same type of enjoyment compared to something mainstream like this which automatically would cost them an arm and a leg and even on the second hand market ladies and gentlemen these bikes will still fetch a pretty penny but the focal point as to the reason why i've got this bike in particular is because this bike unlike the gen freeze it's more kin to the Dengfu E10 in a stock configuration so i figured that this would be an ideal comparison to have especially since people are asking me about mainstream versus DIY. Now, I will gladly say that there are other discrepancies one needs to take into consideration, such as motor power and legalities and such, because, you know, the E10 can use the M600, which if you decide to run it stock, yes, it will exceed 15.5 miles an hour. And it is possible to retune them, but it's, it's not easy. I'll say that much, ladies and gentlemen. I need to make a video about how to do so, so bear with me you'll, you'll obviously see that in due course but nonetheless one of the interesting things about this bike which a lot of people gravitate towards is the fact that because it's so reputable because obviously it's specialized people assume that any problems there is light at the end of the tunnel and you will be able to obviously get it rectified this is true to an extent however this brings me to the second reason why i've decided to pick this bike up now obviously like i said this is a 2019 model and so two years ago they decided to extend the warranty regarding these frames so that if you had any motor problems following from some of the specialized reports they were receiving you'd be able to go into your local specialized dealer and of course rectify it without putting your hands in your pockets and paying for it obviously we are now coming towards the end of that extended warranty lease so of course i'm curious into finding out whether or not the life expectancy of this bike can now survive on its own without said warranty which is what makes this more intriguing now there's a couple of advocates who i know who have been more keen to suggest that going second hand is more beneficial than going diy like the dengfu stuff i'm not saying i disagree with that but they have yet to have provided concrete proof outlining that that is factual i'm going to put it to the test i want to find out whether or not this can out survive my dengfu stuff and just for reference, I am not the original owner of this. I am technically the third. I originally tried to buy off the original owner, but I fell into some complications, which I'm not going to get into. But the second person who bought it, <laughs> he decided to flog it, and then I bought it off him. Hence the reason why I've built it up as to what you can see here. This is obviously not a stock uh, Gen 2 Comp Carbon Levo. It would originally come with a Fox 34. It would come with a Fox DPS. Obviously, it would have the Rover wheels, 780 mil wide bars. I think it would have come with an X-Fusion Manic dropper seat post and 170. Obviously, I'm not rocking none of that. Mizaki fork up front, DPX2 in the back, 810 mil wide bars, 31.8 mil diameter. I may swap those to 35, I'm not too sure. And these are 810. 210 one up dropper seat post. You know my preference, ladies and gentlemen. Slammed as always. And of course, huge shout out to Legislate bikes, they are my go to place for those dropper seat posts. Um, WTB STI wheels, uh, uh, 29 inch butcher tires, 2.4 out back, 2.6 up front, and a Shimano Dior M5100 uh, drivetrain, 11 to 46 two from the back, 11 speed, it'll do. Um, like I said, I feel that this will be appropriate for me to go up against my Dengfu E10, not the E22. We've already seen a video on my channel of me going up against the E22. And of course, I do not want to be putting myself in that position again. Hello, hello. Um, but nonetheless, I'm curious into seeing what the life expectancy of this will be. Like I said, the warranty period of this has expired. 
I'm not entitled to no warranty. I am the third owner. Although, out of fascination, I was able to register this bike and it, for su surprisingly interesting reasons, it actually gave me the reason to register it as the original owner, which I'm not too sure what that's all about on the Mission Control app, but it did. I know I'm transparent. I know I'm an honest person. I know I'm the third owner of this. I have no original receipt of purchase. So of course, if anything were to happen, motor fails, battery fails, anything along it fails, I'm putting my hand in my pocket in order to rectify it. And I've got no choice but to in order to answer the question after a year. So keep a watchful eye out and future content in order for me to find out what the life expectancy of the Gen 2 Levo is in 2022. That's not the new Bros 2.2 motor, that's a Bros 2.1. So of course, if I were to have a, get a new motor, it would be the 2.2. So essentially I've got a chassis which can support it, but that's not the point. The point being is I know how much money I've paid for this frame set only. I'm curious into seeing what it's going to be following from. And obviously a lot of the components in which I've used in order to slap it on, some I've had to purchase like uh, the dropper, uh, the shark, uh, the fork has technically been repurposed off the Tsunami. The Tsunami I have to get some new forks for actually. And the only reason why the Mizaki Z1s are on this is because after speaking with a couple of specialized dealers, they've said that this particular era of Levo is supposed to use a 51 mil offset fork, not a 44. But I just thought, you know what, play it safe. 51 mil offset, there you go. I can at the very least ride it as it was meant to. But uh, but yeah, keep a watchful eye on future content. This bike will be sometimes featured on my channel. There are other plans I do have for it, but on the whole, it will it will be interesting. It will be interesting. And as for the Deng Fu stuff, do not worry. It is not going away anytime soon. I've got no intentions of selling the frames. You know that the V2 E10 uh, build is coming on slowly. You'll see that in due course. Looking forward to completing that bike. And obviously for the E22, well, the next video you'll see will be one of the upgrades I've made to that bike, which I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it's transformed the bike even more. But uh, but yeah, huge shout out to all the new subscribers to the channel. Huge shout out to everyone who's been digging the E10 and the E22 stuff. And if you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button, comment down below. And of course, until the next time, take it easy, stay safe, peace for the journey, hashtag. F-A-B-T, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.